Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Jetty Jet Show. I'm Jetty and I'm going to be breaking down this painting for you guys. It's a semi-realistic anime-esque style painting and I'm going to share with you guys some of the tricks that I do in order to achieve this type of look. First, I uh, start off with a loose line drawing. It's got to be loose. This is this is the key to the, the type of feel that you want at the end. Um, keeping the loose lines means you're going to have a more painterly look. I don't clean up the lines. I don't I don't try to refine it and make it look very comic-y. The next thing I do is I add a wash. It's a flat color. The color I'm using here is a pretty saturated orange and this is going to serve as um, a base color that's going to harmonize all the colors and paints that go on top later. Next I create a silhouette for the figure so that I can clip mask it so that anything that I paint above it on a new layer it stays within that shape and it makes my painting a lot faster and I don't have to be as careful when painting. Here I'm drawing kind of a, some general shapes in the background. I'm adding a window in the back and that's where our light source is going to be coming from. Right now I'm just adding the hue tones, hue variations and I'm thinking about her in shadow. Which areas can be cooler or warmer within the shadow. Alright, the next stage is to go darker. Starting with the hair, eyes, eyebrows and lips. So we're just gradually getting darker throughout the whole painting. And I'm using a default dense brush that comes with Clip Studio Paint. Nothing that, nothing too special. I'm just painting in the hair in a flowy shape, leaving spaces for lights. And it gives the hair that rhythm and volume. And now establishing some direct light. And this direct light that I'll be using is um, kind of backlit. So creating kind of a halo effect. And really quickly here, I actually paint over the lines by locking the transparency of the line and using a lighter kind of warm tone to paint over those lines, making them a lot more transparent. So it gives you that a feeling that the lines are pretty much going away at this point. All right, so now I'm adding some reflected light and those are the lights that bounce off of the room and back onto her skin in the shadowed area. And by adding those reflected lights, it's going to really round off our form, giving us that three-dimensional look. Also, it's going to help us create a three-value system. One light source, the direct light, a reflected light, and in creating the reflected light, it creates a core shadow. Now I'm adding some form shadows within the shadow. So we're in the shadow, but we can still have some, have some form shadows to round off some of the forms around her cheeks, around her nose. And I'm blending away and softening it, softening them after I've laid them down. After creating those form shadows, those kind of secondary darks, I go for my darkest of darks. And those are basically going to create some stronger edges, some cleaner edges. And I'm going to look for crevices and pockets of, of darks where, where there's space or where, where forms are touching each other. And there's a, there's a dark a pocket in her hair and it can get really dark because her hair is uh, a darker value overall and especially her eyes. Her eyes are a great spot um, place for, for creating attention and, and keeping our focus. You want to be selective where you want uh, where you're going to put your darks. They can be anywhere but wherever you put those darks that's where our eyes are going to be drawn towards. All right, so at this stage, as you can see, the darks and the lights are really helping the, the lines to fade away and as, if, as if they're not even there anymore. Um, and we can uh, pick out from the lights and shadows that we've established to pull out some fine detail like the hair strands and clean up some of the edge work. So really quickly, I take a soft round brush and I erase out the lines. Uh, because I'm pretty confident at this stage that the painting is going to stand on its own. But I leave some of the lines there to still guide me along the way. And going back and forth between painting in those fine details, using a smaller, smaller thinner brush uh, to break those shadow shapes and drawing in those fine details, and even cutting into the shadows with some lighter value to create some, some hair strands. So at this stage, you can add as much fine, small little hair strands and detail as you want. Uh, just be careful not to make it look too overworked. Again, going back to some of the darks in the hair. 
Here I am creating some warmer, warmer uh, reflected light, bounce light off of her arm. So when the light bounces off her arm, it's not just a white light. It's actually a pinker tone um, because her skin would be a warmer tone. Uh, my goal here is to reduce those lines. And since I've lightened those lines up, they kind of blend nicely. So whatever color I put on top, since they are they have like a warmer tone and they're not just black and desaturated gray. The colors, the darker colors or the edge work that I put over it will blend nicely. It won't look desaturated and muddy. On the edges of her lips, I'm taking a darker, more saturated color and just going along the edges and creating that kind of dark crevice around her lips, around her teeth. And I wanted to push uh, the darks of her lips a little more, kind of make them a little more luscious. But I felt like I felt like they were a little overdone, like she's wearing too much lipstick. And I kind of like that natural kind of subtle look. So this is based off a photo and a photo study. And anytime you find like a really nice photo with uh, good lighting, take the opportunity to study it and just paint it. Just do a direct copy and and see what you can learn from it. And you can use this technique. If you felt like you were going slow, try it again and again. And you might even find uh, an approach of your own. All right, now we're coming to the final stages of the painting. And I'm pretty much painting on a flat layer now. So I flattened all the layers and they're just sitting above the, the actual layers. And I'm looking for the lines and I'm painting them away by color selecting and color picking the colors around those lines and just painting them away and also I'm looking for kind of patchy brushed areas where they're kind of too hard edged and just softening them away with a soft brush and if you want to leave it a little more painterly just you know leave those brushed areas a little more just patchy and you don't have to worry about softening as much and the thing about flattening your image uh, there's no going back you're painting directly on the final image and since we are at kind of like a pretty high rendered level, it's it's okay. You can be confident. We've got, we've we've got all the darks and lights established. All we're doing is pretty much refining all the edges, making a little bit the edges a little bit more sharper, the corners and crevices a little darker, the lights a little lighter, and adding those small little details here and there. Whenever you're drawing, you want to flip it as much as you can so you can catch all those kind of little mistakes, the things that you might have missed. And I flipped it and I noticed the eye was a bit low and I just lassoed it and moved it up, which is another nice feature about flattening your image. The, all of the layers on, on one layer and whatever you need to change can be easily shifted with your lasso tool. But make sure you flip the drawing as much as you can in the earlier stages. The earlier you catch your, your problems, the easier it is to change. And for the final touch, I had a kind of a, a bloomed, a blooming light bloom at the very back because it's super bright and there's, it should be scattered everywhere. And I uh, just put a little subtle touch to give it kind of that more, that more atmospheric look. And that is just one of the approaches I have to painting a semi-realistic anime portrait. I hope this helped you guys. If you want to help me to create more of these kind of videos and get the full in-depth breakdowns, I've finally created a Patreon. Yep, and as a supporter of my Patreon, I'll be giving out exclusive content like original PSDs, Manga Studio Clip Studio paint files, so you guys can play with the layers. And I'm also going to include original resolution JPEGs and the line art, so you guys can play around and paint on and experiment with. I'm also going to be doing PDF files of proper step-by-step -step breakdowns of the pieces so you guys can follow along with the video or while working on your own drawing. I'll also have longer detailed video breakdowns talking about the specific tools I use, how and why I do things. And finally, if you want the rewards individually and you don't want to support me through Patreon, you can purchase them on my Gumroad. I have a Gumroad now. And that's pretty much it. Thanks everybody for sticking it to the very end. I know it was a bit long. Uh, I just want to thank you guys again for all the support. Um, I'm brand new to this Patreon thing and I'm a bit scared, but I'm willing to just jump right into it. So uh, please join me, join me on this art journey. Hope to see you guys out there and see where it goes. 
take care and as always peace